Hello, my name is Luke, um, and I found this uh, this question today, which is kind of a fairly applied uh, integration calculus uh, type question that you might get in a high school calculus or a first semester calculus in college uh, question. There's a slight twist on this one, which is they've uh, interchanged the uh, variables. So the question is to sketch the region enclosed by two curves, decide how to integrate it uh, to find the area, and then find the area of the region they also have you draw a rectangle, which uh, we'll kind of do. And then the two curves are x equals 5 minus 5y squared and x equals 5y squared minus 5. So right off the bat, you're thinking, OK, it's it's they've done something weird. You might try to solve for x or for y as a function of x, in which case you would get two functions, depending on whether x is positive or negative, because of the square root. Um, so just real quickly, you know, what you would have is you could move, for example, the 5y over here, you'd have uh, 5y squared equals uh, 5 minus x. Um, you can divide by the 5, you'd have 1 minus x over 5. And then when you take the square root, you, you'd have to remember to do the plus or minus. So it, could, it, come, it becomes fairly complicated right off the bat. It's much easier to just look at this. And where you're used to kind of using y is equal to a function of x and kind of doing things like that, this is very simple to just go, you know what? I'm just going to describe x as a function of y. The only tricky part about this is visualizing the curves. So in that case, if you say x is a function of y, um, both of these are parabolas. It's fairly easy to see, right? Uh, one is negative uh, 5y squared, so it's going to open towards the negative axis, x-axis. And then the other one is 5y squared, which is going to open uh, towards the, the uh, positive x-axis. So let's just take each of these in turn. Let's graph x equals 5 minus 5y squared. So first off, on the x-axis, when y equals 0, we're going to get a value of 5. So that's going to be that. We know this is going to open towards the negative axis because it's a negative 5y squared, but it's a positive 5y squared. And then to find the zeros, just like we would with a parabola, at what value of y will x be uh, zero? Or excuse me, what value of um, x yeah, would y end up uh, being zero? And the so what you can kind of figure out here is when y is 1, um, you're going to have uh, x being zero. Um, so in that case, you have the uh, the vertices here meeting at one and at negative one. I might have said that right. So you're trying to figure out what value of y is x going to be zero? Where is this going to curve intersect the y-axis where x equals zero? And so with that, you can kind of draw a parabola kind of going like this. That's uh, not a very good parabola. Um, so it's going, you know, kind of along these lines here. All right, so that's the first curve. For the second curve, we can do the same thing. Um, those two things can, can give you the, the shape of a parabola. So uh, x equals 5y squared minus 5. When y is 0, we're going to have a negative 5 for x. And when y, when y is 1 or negative 1, we'll have x equal to 0. So again, 1 and negative 1. So this parabola is basically going to be a mirror image. So we can use some symmetry arguments, perhaps. Um, something like this. Um, so that's how you can uh, draw the curve. As you can see, this bottom right in the pictures uh, best equates to what those curves are going to look like. The next thing is how do we decide what to integrate against? Do we want to integrate via the x or y axis? You actually could integrate along the x axis. You'd have to, again, you know, solve one of both of these or one of these for um, y as a function of x, which you get two functions, depending on whether x is positive or negative, or I should say uh, y is positive or negative. And so what you could do is, you know, you'd have one function here for this x value. Um, you'd have another function here for this x value. Uh, you'd have one function here and you'd have one function here. You could use a symmetry argument to say, just solve one of these and then multiply it by four to find the actual area. Um, but if you're not comfortable with symmetry, arg arg symmetry arguments, we won't get into that. The best, the easiest thing to do by far is just to solve this uh, and integrate with respect to the y-axis. So you've got this distance plus this distance, um, and it's going to be your uh, little uh, length, and then you do that dy. So that's going to be uh, 5 minus 5y squared minus 0 is going to be that distance. And then 0 minus uh, 
5y squared minus 5 is going to be that distance. And it's going to end up just doubling these two things, right? Because this is going to turn into a negative. This is going to turn into a positive. Uh, you're going to add these two together, and you're going to get uh, double. So you're going to get 2 times um, 5 minus 5y squared. That's going to be the function you're going to integrate. Integrate this from negative 1 to 1 dy. And that's going to go from negative 1 all the way up to 1. And you have this function for the little bit of length that you're doing. So I've worked that out on another uh, screen. And as you can see, I factored out the, the 10 there, um, which is going to be the 5 times the 2. 1 minus y squared dy. Uh, it's going to give you uh, y minus y cubed over 3 from negative 1 to 1. You could use the symmetry argument here, but I'll go ahead and expand this out. Um, we'll forget about the 10 for a second. So this is going to be 1 minus 1 third minus, and then in parentheses, we'll do uh, negative 1 minus negative 1 cubed is negative 1 over 3. So we can cancel those out. And then when we distribute this negative sign, we'll get a plus here and a negative here. So this will be 2 minus 2 thirds, which is 4 thirds. And then remember, we've got this 10 on the outside. So the ultimate answer should be 40 divided by 3. Um, and just to double check, our answer makes sense. If this was a rectangle, um, this would be, you know, 10 and this would be 2, so we'd have a total area of 20. So we want something less than 20, um, but maybe probably more than 10, so more than half of that. Uh, 40 over 3, it's less than 20, because 40 over 2 would be um, 20, and it's more than 10. So we feel pretty good about our answer, at least in terms of dimensions. Uh, thanks for tuning in.